If you're having to reduce staff numbers in your business, you'll need to choose who to keep and who to put at risk of redundancy. Where you've got individuals doing the same role or similar roles with similar skill sets, you'll need to pull them all together and carry out a selection criteria to identify who stays. There are no mandatory selection criteria and this should be based on the business need but usually I recommend a mixture of things like skills, knowledge and experience required for the job and relevant qualifications. You can also um, assess these criteria quite objectively which is a positive thing. Job performance is also usually included. Um, this covers how effectively the individual has been carrying out their role. And if you've got an established performance review system, you can use that to use the results of that to assess job performance. If not, then try and be as objective as possible by using evidence such as sales figures or customer feedback. Attendance is another one that's quite often included, although make sure you steer clear of any absence types which could be potentially discriminatory such as long-term health issues, emergency leave for dependents or pregnancy related sickness. You should prepare, um, sorry, once you've prepared your selection criteria you should share it with the affected group and ask them for feedback as part of your consultation processes and you'll then need to score each individual applying the selection criteria as objectively and consistently as possible and making a note of the evidence against each score. I recommend at least two people carrying out the scoring, that might be two managers who uh, know the employee um, and can perhaps score separately and then take an average or use one manager with HR as a verifier to evaluate the evidence and make sure that the approach is being consistently applied. The individual should be informed of their score and where they fall in the ranking as part of the ongoing consultation uh, but you should not share the score of others. So once you've completed that scoring, you'll probably want to hold another one-to-one -one meeting to advise those who fall at the bottom of the scores that they are provisionally at risk of redundancy and provide their redundancy calculations. If you want to know what to include in a one-to-one, -one, do watch my previous video and I hope that's helpful.